Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode of the Al Ferrari, we are going to finish buttoning up a bunch of little bits and pieces that uh, are still hanging over our head. All right guys, welcome back. And uh, those of you watching previously will have seen in the last couple of weeks, I spent building an entirely new body loom from scratch for the Al Ferrari. If you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up and think about subscribing. If you haven't, it does help us out. Tick the bell, all that sort of stuff. Um, the body loom, it was, uh, it was really, really good. I really enjoyed it in the end sitting and thinking about every single aspect of the car as it goes along, how every component is gonna work and interact with each other, where the switches are gonna be, and a, a bit about the ultimate layout of the car. Um, I think it went really well, I was quite happy. There were a couple of comments, there were people uh, who, weren't, who weren't sure about the grounding points, only having two grounding points in the car. Uh, some people saying that it's gonna have uh, there'll be more interference with, with others. Actually, the, the opposite is true. Like high-end motorsports uh, looms generally try and share everything has the one grounding point so that you don't get um, sort of uh, strange interference and things like that. It sort of keeps it everything in the, in the one spot. Uh, people were worried that the loom's gonna get hot. I made sure that the grounds are more than covered for, for the, uh, the, the different uh, points and it just means less potential issues later on because there are so many issues you end up getting with wiring with cars that often end up just being bad grounds so uh, having them in uh, sort of one or, or in this case two spots one in the back and one in the front uh, I think will uh, look after it nicely and uh, and then obviously I still haven't wired the engine. The engine is a separate thing that I'm going to have to do uh, getting that uh, all connect up to the Link ECU. Today, the things that I have still yet to uh, yet to tackle are um, now I've laid the loom in in here. There's a couple of spots where I want to just sort of make sure I make some some put some little tabs in to uh, to be able to clip it in when the car is finally painted. I want to do all that stuff. Again, this is why I do these things now and not when the car's all painted, so that I can go through and weld more things on and do things. So hopefully, when I actually have the car ready for final assembly, there isn't too much stuff that I've missed. That is the plan. So um, first things first, let's uh, cut out a bunch of little tabs and uh, start working out where we're gonna mount them and weld them into the car. All right, so you can see here that I've added all these tabs all the way around and uh, they are gonna be nice and neat and tidy. Once uh, the car's all painted and everything, I'll actually put some heat shrink on them so that it will not rub through the wires, so they'll be all nice and neat. So that is another job ticked off the list. All right, so I have been working for the last couple of hours trying to rack my head around how I'm gonna plumb in this heater. So the, uh, the inlet and outlet are on the side here. They currently turn around a 90 degree facing straight towards the firewall. But I still have to fit in uh, this thing, which is the heater valves. So for those who don't completely understand how the uh, heater works is basically the coolant of your engine is comes in through one side of your heater core, out through the other, and your air blows past that hot water, and that's what gives you hot air in the cabin. Um, to make sure that there's not hot water in the cabin all the time, making the cabin hot on a hot day, you have a heater valve. So this is basically just uh, opens and closes the, it's like a, a, a tap basically that opens the, and lets the hot water go through the valve and uh, back out again. Now for my situation, I still need to be able to fit this somewhere under here, 
There's no way to fit it in the cabin between the existing pipes. It's just, it's not gonna get in there. And uh, there's, it's, I'm really tight on space. And it's also a matter of trying to work out where it's gonna come out in the engine bay because the engine is really close to the firewall on the other side as well. What I have come up with is, I've managed to fit an AN fitting, dash 10 AN fitting through where the heater is going to uh, originally went through into this car so I can reuse that hole and I should be able to just fit this uh, heater valve in between the two and the bottom I'm going to uh, have to make it go straight through the firewall and then straight back out again. On the engine bay side you can sort of see that I've just sort of loosely got uh, the AM fitting sticking out the end here into uh, behind the engine there's plenty of room there for that and uh, the other one is going to come out somewhere around here and, uh, and then I can put an AM fitting going around and tuck the hoses in and they'll come through underneath the uh, V of the engine. One of the lines will be connected up here. This is the inlet to the heater and then the outlet will travel down through, down the front of the engine, down the side and uh, there's a dash 10 fitting right down the bottom of the radiator that it's gonna connect back up to. So I know that all must seem really straightforward but it's actually been, I said, at least an hour, if not more, of running different scenarios through my head, trying to work out how I'm going to get the hoses to go where I want them to go. And there is just very little room to be able to maneuver these things. Because obviously the hoses can't bend that tight, otherwise they kink. There's, it's not that easy to put a bend in because even if you're uh, using a, a fitting, the fitting might turn quickly, but there's a lot of uh, sort of infrastructure either side of the bend. Yeah, anyway, it takes up a lot of space. We, uh, now it's time to pull the heater out and start uh, cutting things up and measuring and uh, getting ready to be able to plumb that in so that it's gonna actually do the job. Alright, I managed to uh, get my, my valve is connected to the end of the heater now and there's, uh, there's enough flex in that hose to be able to bend sort of to a, a, a short level to be able to get my flow going into the radiator core. Uh, the bottom one now, as you just saw, I drilled the hole through so that it can go through. I put my order into Raceworks to get all the fittings I need because uh, I don't have them all on hand, but uh, it's so time consuming working out these plumbing things, but but uh, yeah, once I've got my head around it, I'm, I'm pretty happy it's gonna look good. It's gonna be mostly hidden down in behind the back of the engine. So that's another job ticked off the list. Next. All right, so I chucked the uh, tank back in so you can sort of have a look and see the layout in the back corner here, always as I planned. So we've got a battery box in the front here. Uh, and then behind we'll have the air conditioning compressor and I've made space there for the relay box in the rear. So I need to make some mounts up now for the relay box and also uh, make the mounting points for the compressor. All right, so I just folded myself up a basic little bracket, put on some captive nuts on the back, just a sort of simple fold, cut a V out of it, uh, folded it over and then welded it up. And uh, I've got my bracket that will uh, hold my fuse box nicely, or my relay box, I should say. Uh, and it will hold it up on the side, up in here. So I just need to trim it out so that it will uh, tuck in nicely. And then I'll have a nice mount for my relay box. Another job off the books. All 
So we have it all nicely mounted up there. That is a, uh, a nice fit in there. Uh, should be able to get to the uh, fuse panel uh, still behind the battery. It should be uh, a nice little addition. So uh, moving on. All right, so the relay box I didn't actually uh, mount last week, but uh, there is a spot here. I'm not actually sure what that mounted from the factory, but uh, I'm not using it now. So uh, that will be a nice spot there to mount my fuse box. And then behind that, I still need to mount this thing, which is actually the ECU for the Yaris power steering. So uh, I'm going to make some mounts up onto this original casing and I'm gonna mount it up behind that panel. So I'll have that behind and the, uh, the fuse box over the top to uh, mount my bits and pieces in there. It's getting tight up there, but uh, it all will fit. Okay, so I've got my relay box accessible from underneath and the power steering ECU is mounted in here, ready to uh, wire up to the uh, power steering itself. So they are another couple of jobs ticked off the list. All right, well, my final job for today is to fit in some speaker mounts for the rear quarter panel. So I've sort of went backwards and forwards about how I would mount my rear speakers because I think uh, just having the two speakers in the front is not enough. I went and got some two matching speakers, the same as what I've got in the front, uh, is what I'm going to mount into the corner in the back here in the uh, sides of the rear quarter panel. So it'll sort of sit in front of the cage behind the seat belt. It'll be a nice sort of neat little uh, pocket here. So I need to make some panels now that I can actually mount these into and uh, weld them in. All right, we have speaker grills in either side or mounting locations, I should say. They're nice and solid. Um, they need to be fully welded up. I'll do that when I weld up the rest of the uh, interior. As you can see, the tunnel still needs to be done. There's a bunch of things that still need to be welded up. When I get this on the rotisserie, it's gonna be much easier to get around things and just uh, weld everything up as we go. Um, I know today was not the most interesting of uh, episodes I've done, it's just, not every episode can be a, uh, a flashy one. It, every, the, all these little bits and pieces need to be done to get the car functional and running, and we are a big step towards that, and hopefully I knocked over most of these little things uh, today. So uh, I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff.
Hey guys, the Ferrari SP or Dino SP as it's also known was a mid-engine sports prototype car first seen in the 1961 World Sports Car Championship. In 1959, Enzo Ferrari publicly denied building a mid-engine sports car. However, he tasked Carlo Chitti with the task of building a mid-engine sports car and a Formula One car. Chitti designed it around Ferrari's existing 2.4 litre Dino V6 due to its lightweight and compact size. Chitti collaborated with the coach builder Mandaro Fantuzzi, designing the bodywork using a wind tunnel. This resulted in several new features, including a low bonnet, and high bodywork flush with the windscreen and the shark nose feature used on the Formula One car that I talked about last week. Only six chassis were built but they were modified and developed continuously, changing bodywork and moving to an all new V8 power plant designed by Kitty. This was a very successful platform for Ferrari and they won the 61 and 62 Targa Florio and it also contributed to Ferrari's winning the 61 and 62 World Sports Car Championship. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> All right, probably not the most exciting of episodes, but uh, it's lots of things that are sort of ticked off the to-do list. Getting uh, the heater sorted out in my head of how the plumbing is going to go was one of the big ones that I really wanted to tackle. And, uh, you know, putting the speakers in the back, uh, for those of you uh, wondering, yes, I did put the wires for the speakers into my loom. So there are the rear speaker wires. They're all there. I did think about everything going forward, exactly where I'm going to put everything and how everything's going to be laid out. So it's all, uh, yeah, it's all Coming getting together. there. One of those things that just getting all these little bits and pieces aiming towards the end goal. So I'd just like it. to apologize too for my Italian pronunciation. Just um, You're getting there. You're getting there. There were the people like, you know, you know <laughs> there, were, there were plenty of people uh, helping with the... Uh, Thank you. No, it's yeah, all gratefully received. The pronunciation. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, next week we should be back onto some something a little bit more interesting, which I've been uh, waiting to tackle, which is probably wiring up the Ferrari engine to the Link ECU, which is going to be a bit of a new challenge for me. So it should be fun. Sounds great. Like and subscribe if you haven't. Let Jeff know what you think. And if you want to follow him on um, Patreon and watch videos without a... Any ads? Yep. A day early, that, it's, uh, that will definitely help us out. All right, guys. Uh, have a good one. We'll see you next time. See you, guys. Do you like little kitty? Kitty designed it around Ferrari's existing 2.4 seat. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've kind of like reached a peak and I'm still downhill from here. Designed it around Ferrari's existing 2. Point due to its lightweight size and compactness. No. Um, <laughs> due to its lightweight size and compact nature. No. Yes. Not lightweight size. Lightweight, What's lightweight size. And compact size. Okay. <laughs> Only six chassis were built, but they were continually modified and they were. Uh, but they were modified and continually changed. Oh. <laughs> I think I need my blood sugar's really low. Wind tunnel. Try it again. <laughs>